I'm designing a 3D printed Arduino powered remote control tank that shoots silly string. Here's how I did the electronics. If you don't know him already, do yourself a favor and look up Ivan Miranda. He is building the most epic tank project you've ever seen. It's ready printed and it's big enough and powerful enough for him to ride on. What an awesome guy and I highly recommend subscribing to his channel. I was inspired by him and I wanted to make my own version, but nowhere near as big. I wanted to scale things down and make it much more manageable. I wanted this one to be quick to make, I wanted it to be easy for you to follow, and I wanted to make some 3D printed parts, but the rest off the shelf items that were pretty simple to put together. I also wanted it to be fun, hence the silly string. Now all the resources for this build are in the description below. That includes shopping lists, any instructions that I refer to in any of the code that I show you. If any of this gets too hard, just copy and paste the code and it should be working in no time. This tank build is gonna be in two parts. This first one, how to do the electronics and the coding. The second one, the 3D printed parts and the testing. I'm gonna keep this video as short as I can. There are five parts, but some of them are quite brief. We first have to wire up our battery and BEC. We're gonna set up the RC controller. We're gonna build the tank chassis. We're gonna set up the Arduino and motor shield, and then we're gonna do the Arduino code. Now for my tank, I'm gonna be using a four cell LiPo that I have from my Vicar Bison. It's around 15 volts, yet we need 12 volts to run the motors and only five volts for Arduino. So to do that, we need a BEC or battery eliminator circuit. Let's have a closer look at the product we've chosen. It's by Matek Systems. It's a mini power hub and it's normally meant for quadcopters. It takes the power in from your battery and it distributes it to a number of different things on a quadcopter. For us, we care about the five volt out and the 12 volt out because we're gonna send that to our Arduino and our motor controller. Our diagram is gonna be pretty similar to this. We're gonna have the battery coming in, but we're not gonna have any of the other components that you see here, only the 12 volts out and five volts out. To start up, I recommend a battery that is four cell or above, which puts it above 12 volts. I got it connected from my local hobby shop and I wired in a simple switch, so I could switch that on and off. You can see I very carefully wired my main battery power in, making sure that they're not shorting. And then I have two leads coming out for 12 volts and then a plug coming out for five volts. Next up is our radio controlled transmitter and receiver. This one is the FlySky FS i6. There's heaps of them on Banggood. This one's cheap, but it's still got heaps of great reviews. It's got six channels programmable. So let's go through how we need to pair it and test it with a servo. Now the RC comes with this little plug just for binding. And when you plug it in on the top row, it shorts ground to signal and that gets us ready to bind. So what we do is hold down the bind key as we switch on the transmitter. And then all we have to do is take that five volt output that we have from our BEC and plug it into any of the other channels. And it goes signal, positive, then negative. So we're plugging it in with red in the middle pin, black on the side, and then we find that it's bound. We can disconnect our top one and to test everything's working, let's get a servo and plug that in. Here we're plugging into channel four, which is the X axis left to right for the left hand stick. For remote control plane, that'd be done. And for our turret controls, that would also work, but we need another step for our motors. The most interesting part of this build is definitely this tank chassis. There's heaps of these available online. This one's from Banggood. It was one of the cheaper ones and I picked it for that reason and because it just looked really cool. There are some linked instructions on their page, but they're actually for another tank model. The first half is great, the second half doesn't match, but if you follow my guide and just look at the pictures, you'll find it's pretty easy to put together with some common sense. So here's a time lapse of the build. All up, I'd say it took me about one hour. I made a couple of small mistakes, had to disassemble one or two wheels, but referring to the pictures, I got it done and it was quite satisfying. Now this thing is all metal apart from the tracks and the quality is definitely up to what we want here. Most things are anodized or powder coated for protection. I've tied up the wiring on top. I've put a little bit of hot glue on the motor leads to stop them straining and breaking. Now the next step in our list is connecting everything to this Arduino motor shield, but of course we need an Arduino underneath. And in this stage, I'm using an Arduino Uno clone that's only a couple of dollars from Banggood. I've been using it for a lot of things recently and it's been faultless. Now the shield is a clone of an old Adafruit motor controller version one. There are instructions available, but they're quite a bit wordy. I think you'll find it easier just to follow this guide instead. 
The first thing we're going to do is solder in some header pins into some of the empty slots. And on the left, you can see we have a two by one header, and that's going to be used to get our five volts in from the BEC. And then on the right hand side, we have a six by one header, and that populates the vacant pins, which controls analog zero through to analog five. And we're going to use those as inputs to read the pulse from the RC receiver. We're going to start off by connecting the five volts. We should already have power going from the BEC into the receiver and we're going to daisy chain off channel six because we don't need six channels for this project therefore plugging in the positive and ground and then that goes straight into the new header pin we put in and we have powered the logic for our arduino next we need to power 12 volts for the motor drivers so we're going to put in the two 12 volt wires that we had coming off our bec red and black into positive and ground as you can see here and we need to remove this jumper and that tells us that we have a separate five volts and motor power supply. I'm gonna plug it in just on the left pin only so it's not actually bridging those two pins and now we're ready to go. If we switch on our BEC, we'll see that everything lights up as it should. The green light on top of the shield indicates it's getting the 12 volts. If we look on the inside, we can see we have five volts going to the Arduino as well. Now, because we're driving 12 volt motors, we can't use the five volts out of the RC receiver to run that. So here I connect a four point cable from A0 through to A3, and then I connect that into channel one through to channel four on the receiver, and now we can get the Arduino to read that. Our last connections for the entire project are to plug in the positive and negative for the DC motors. Now, the way I've done it here is to have the two red wires on the outside, the two ground wires just inside those. If you use my exact code, but you're finding your tank does everything in reverse, it means you have your left and right motors switched, so switch them around the other way. We've got it wired, so let's do a quick test to make sure everything is correct. First thing we need to do is make sure we have the correct library installed. We're going to come to Sketch, Include Library, then go to Manage Libraries. We're going to type in Adafruit Motor, and that should be all we need to find it. And we're going to do it for V1 for this video. There is a later V2 edition. You can see I already have it installed. If you don't, you'll see a big button here, just like that. Click Install, and you're ready to go. Now we're going to come up to File, Examples, and then come down and find Motor Shield Library. And the one I like to use is Motor Party. The aim of this sketch is to show us how to code the three things that this Motor Shield can do. And that is stepper motors, servos, and DC motors. So we're not gonna use all of this code, but it's just gonna ensure that everything is connected and working properly. Relevant bits for us, we have a DC motor, but we have it connected to port number three and four. So I'm gonna change that to three. The servo can stay wherever it is. And then we can see here, it's gonna have a serial connection to update us on what's going on. Servo is gonna attach, and then it runs through some code. So basically in this code, the bits that we care about are how the motor runs. So we have motor run, and then a keyword for forward, and then the speed goes from zero to 255. It's gonna loop through that, making the speed go up, making the speed go down, and then it's gonna make the servo move around as well. Let's flush it to the Uno and see how that works. Once we turn it on, the motor's fire to life. I think I had an error in the code where I also had a stepper meant to be on motor ports in four. So we get a little bit of jittering here, but in my earlier testing, it works exactly as it should. So we're ready to proceed. Onto the Arduino code. And yes, this is the hardest part. If it's too hard, don't worry. All the code is linked in the description. Just copy and paste it and go from there. We're gonna break this into two parts. The first is to get this RC receiver being read by the Arduino so we can control the motors. And to do that, we have this very simple little sketch here. So we have some variables for channel one, two, three, four. That's why we're gonna store our readings. And then we have some variables for the pins that we're connecting to. So in one is A0, up to in four, which is A3. Now in our setup, we open the serial port. We tell it that our four inputs are in fact inputs. And then we have a built-in Arduino function called pulse in. It takes two to three arguments and this is how it works. We have our variable where we're gonna store the returned value. We have pulse in. Our first argument is to tell it which pin we're reading from, and we can see that corresponds to A0. We're looking for changes from low to high, and then here is a timeout, how long it waits for before it gives up on the pulse. Below here, I have some code that spits out to the serial port. Number one is reading this, number two is reading this, all the way through to number four. So let's upload that and see how it works. With that uploading, let's open the serial port monitor. And we can see that we're getting zero for everything, but as soon as we turn on the receiver, we'll start to get through signals. So when the sticks are in the middle, it should be around 1500, but as we raise it, we can see here we have channel three for the left stick up and down, 
it goes to just underneath 2000 and down the bottom goes to just underneath 1000 with 1500 in the middle. We can check each of the different stick axes are working and everything is going as planned. So we're ready to transport this code into our main sketch to control the motors. One thing I would note is that this third argument is in fact optional and it defaults to one second timeout. I found that this played up a lot until I upped the number to a certain value and I found this 35,000 value to be ideal for me. If you're having trouble with this project or a similar one, try upping or lowering this value here until you get consistent readings. Now that that's working, we're gonna combine the two bits of code that we've tried so far. Once again, if it's too hard, find the link in the description, just copy and paste what I provide. All right, our final Arduino sketch for controlling the tank. It's simply a combination of the motor party example and the pulsing one that we just did. Let me talk you through it. Up the top, we include our two libraries and then we attach our two motors to ports three and four and we set up two servos as well. We have the same inputs to read from the RCA receiver. In the setup, we open a serial port and once again, tell it that we have four inputs. We also attach our two servos and have the same code from the example for motors one and two. Down in the loop, we read in our four channel values and here's our first important change. We tell it if this is not zero or channel two is not zero, channel three and so forth, do the code in the middle. Otherwise, turn the motors off. Imagine the situation where we turn off the transmitter, it gets a zero reading, but it thinks it's full stick down in one direction and the tank takes off by itself. So this little bit of code is just a little bit of safety to avoid that. Now we have our four signals coming in. The first thing we're gonna do is constrain them. So they shouldn't go below 970 or above 1990, but if they do, we're just gonna cap it at that just to remove any stray values. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it a little bit confusing working in this range. So therefore I map it from minus 100 to 100. So we know zero is in the middle. If I push the stick one way, it's gonna be 100. If I move it the other way, it's gonna be minus 100. So we're just doing a straight translation from here to here. Now for the two servos, that's extremely easy. We just map it back to a zero to 180 degree value reading from channels three and four, which is set up for the left stick. The left stick is going to change the height and by pushing it either left or right, it's going to trigger the firing mechanism. That bit of the code is done. Now this next part of the code from here to here is probably the most complicated. Back up the top, I created two more values for left track and right track and programming the logic took a little bit to get my head around, but the end result is actually quite simple. Our baseline is going to be channel two, which is the right stick up or down. But we're going to modify that by minusing the right stick left and right. So for the left track, we minus channel one. For the right track, we add channel one. This is because controlling a tank is unique. If we push the right stick up, we want both motors forward. If we push it down, we want both motors in reverse. If we push it straight to the right, we want one full forward and one in reverse. So this logic handles that. So to stop our code breaking, we need to constrain it to minus 100 and 100. Imagine the situation where we had the stick diagonally down and to the left. Channel two is gonna be reading minus 100. Channel one is gonna be reading minus 100 and that's gonna take it to minus 200. So this just caps it within the boundaries that we had set earlier. I've got a little bit of code here that prints for the serial just for debugging and I used that when I was first setting it up. And once I was confident it was working, I put in the final bit of code, which is to control the motor. We have a left and a right track and they both work the same way. If it's greater than a dead zone of five, we map between 10 to 100 from zero to 55. Therefore, if we were halfway here, it will go halfway here. If it's a minus number, we know we need it to run backwards. And once again, it maps our two input values as the two speeds of the motor. And we have the exact same thing for the right track, forward and back. It's finally time to test this awesome tank. For these tests, we're gonna ignore the fact that everything is precariously placed on top of the tank and we're on top of a table where the tank itself can fall off. So let's move right forward and turn on the tank and then turn on the transmitter. And the first thing we'll test is our server. This one's gonna control the silly string turret angle. We can hear the other one moving. That's gonna do the firing mechanism. And now the actual tank itself, when we go up, they both go forward. When we go down, they both go back. And then if we go hard to one side, it turns on the spot. Oh dear. Everything is working exactly as it should be. But I'm gonna stop it here before anything gets destroyed. So that concludes part one. But as you can see, everything is kind of hobbled together. 
So in part two, I'm gonna design and 3D print the parts that hold everything together and make everything fire. Hit that sub button so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching and happy taking over the world. One 3D printed Arduino project at a time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.